Good morning, anointed Christian Israelites. I was hoping uh, to give a teaching about the, uh, the bronze servant from uh, Numbers 21 and how it has a direct effect on us today. In fact, it's uh, a reference to a cult which sadly has enslaved all of earth and uh, we are, are all participants in this cult whether we acknowledge it or not it's a uh, it's an addic an addiction and until we until we admit that we have this addiction that we're a member of this cult and that we have been deceived to serve the devil we will never uh, reach our full potential and glorify our king so we're going to be talking about usury and you know I, I talk about usury a whole whole bunch promoted a local currency called Mountain Hours in Summit County Colorado that was usury free and most people can't even conceive of a, how can you have a money system in lending lending without usury well uh, it is possible it has been done and it will be done in the future Tommy usury free Kennedy used to say that uh, because during the exodus uh, usury uh, was explained to the pe people as being a great abomination and they were taught lessons about how usury enslaves the people. That lesson has been lost upon us sadly and uh, as prophets of Yahweh we are required to understand this so that we can uh, offer recovery of sight to the blind so that our people can see it so we can escape our captivity so that we're no longer subject to the mark of the beast, which we are right now. So, <clears throat> recognize that from anywhere? <laughs> Do you recognize that? <laughs> so, uh, fortunately, you know, on the Sabbath, we're re required not to buy and sell. The reason being is when we buy and sell, we participate in a racketeering system which controls the earth and we're actually lifting up this cult which has enslaved humanity through monopoly over the money. And here, here's another one that you maybe have seen around here and there. All right. <laughs> um, all right, here, here's another one. Have, have you seen this one? <laughs> well, that is entirely different from this one. This is the legitimate. This is the, this other one here, the Star Remfan, that's the counterfeit. Well, similarly, there was an original one of these. That was a good thing. That was uh, where Yahweh told Moses to create it as a legitimate warning to his people about something that would be a snare, that would be a, uh, a great sickness to their people. And if we look around on earth, you know, a lot of people say you don't have to obey the law, but if you're to read the curses from uh, Deuteronomy 28, you'll find the curse of the money lenders. And why is that important? Because Jesus whipped the money lenders. He focused on the root of all evil, which is the love of money. It's a group of people who love money as a tool to enslave their brothers. And this isn't a new thing. You know, if you're going back into Numbers and Exodus, you're talking about a, that this is 3,500 years old. And then it goes back prior to that because Yahweh's law is eternal. So usury has always been a sin it's always been a tool for a tiny minority to usurp uh, the sovereignty of God and enslave the masses. So it always is and it always will be. And this symbol, the, both these symbols, are sins or uh, 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 symbols of this cult. And I'm not talking about the legitimate Israelites of the Bible. The legitimate Israelites of the Bible are holy. That's a good thing. All right? Yahweh blesses them repeatedly because the Israelites are the ones he speaks to and they listen 
eventually to be a blessing to all the earth, the seed of Abraham, including uh, the Muslims, uh, because they're against something called Reba, which is the exact same thing as usury. So uh, let's get into the, the word. And, uh, you know, again, from Deuteronomy 28, uh, 43, it's, uh, is if you don't obey my law, Yah says, an alien among you shall rise higher and higher. You will go down lower and lower. He will lend money to you. You will not lend money to him. He will become the head and you will become the tail. Well, isn't that exactly what afflicts us today? That the people who control this one, the money, right? The Federal Reserve notes, the dollar, the, the, the global one world currency, they control the world and they have unlimited funding to, to hire uh, uh, and promote George Soros, Henry Kissinger, uh, I always mess his name up, uh, Br Zegneb Brzezinski. You know, these are foreigners to us, but they're always running the show. Like, listen to Henry Kissinger. Isn't he an alien among us who has risen higher and higher? And uh, these bankers like Soros, well, all these East European guys that you can't even understand what they're, when, when Soros speaks, well, why is George Soros so prominent in our culture because of money he's a money lender <laughs> you know why is it that the last three heads of the federal reserve have been edomite jews they say they're jews but they're not like herod they are of the synagogue of satan they are edomites because they do not represent the law of the Bible. They rebel from the law of the Bible because the law of the Bible forbids usury in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Shabow! This stuff is easy to understand if you would stop listening to Alex Jones and all of these guys that turned on you and went on to promote Donald Trump. And that includes a lot of people who support usury uh, because they don't talk about it, and some of them might even talk about it. But think of all these guys who end up supporting Donald Trump. Donald Trump, who's bombing Syria now, just like Hillary's going to bomb Syria, just like uh, Barack Obama's uh, uh, bombing Syria before, doing the exact same nonsense as uh, George Bush and the Clintons and, and all of these deceivers who are all bank puppets, right? Get that in your head, they're all bank puppets, and sadly, so are you and I, because we have to serve. You know, in the Bible it says, no man, uh, high or low, will be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast, and the mark of the beast is 666. Well, what is the 666? A hexagram. You're under a hex, we have a hex. And Moses wanted to explain this hex all the way back in uh, Numbers, uh, 21 4 through 9 um, and this is a really important thing this is important important stuff because once you understand this thing you will understand that this is the root of all the evil and we admit that we're under a, 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 a curse that we admit that we're under the mark that we're that we admit that we're in captivity and that is the first step to our release we have to admit that the love of money is the root of all evil and that evil people have uh, hijacked our money system. And until we understand that, we won't be whipping the money lenders like our king did. Period. Period. Get with the program. Period. It's not greed. It's not uh, the homosexuals. It's not uh, the liberals. It's not... The phone is upside down. It looks right side up to me, so I'll, I, I can maybe flip it later. But right now, it's uh, it's right side up. Uh, I actually wrote the dollar symbol backwards so that it, it could be uh, right ways. So um, here's a verse of scripture that people who are lawless, who are antinomian, antinomian means that, that you know when the reason Christianity. Christian dumb, who has been deceived to not believe in the laws of Yahweh, are 
completely in a ditch. And you won't, we will not understand how to get out of this captivity until we return to obedience to our king. So I say this over and over again, but, but it's essential. We are in a season right now of captivity. And uh, the seasons of captivity, it's a cause and effect relationship. The cause is rebellion and disobedience, same thing. The, 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 the effect of rebellion is captivity and the curse and the mark and the tribulations. So to end the tribulation, to end the curse, to end the captivity, the, to end uh, the hex, to end the hex, right? We have to end our idolatry. So there's a direct correlation when we're observing these false gods, these earthly gods, we go into a captivity because we're not, uh, the first commandment is to uh, have no other gods before Yahweh. So that means we're listening and we're obedient to something other than Yahweh. Because if we listen to his laws, then we obey, obey him. So, okay, very important verse of scripture. Right, because we're always praying. You know, if we're believers, we're always praying. But sadly, the, the Bible says repeatedly that even our prayers will be an abomination if we don't hear his laws because we're not obeying him. Um, okay, this is from Proverbs 20, 28, 9. Very important verse of scripture. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith Yahweh. Proverbs 28, 9. This isn't my opinion. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. So, if we're participating in a system we're obeying and serving a system which is rebellious to our king. We're in rebellion. That means our prayers are an abomination. Right? Well, abomination is a very, very big word because that's associated with usury. It's associated with uh, sodomy. So typically you'll go to church and the uh, hireling uh, pastors, they'll be quick to condemn, use, uh, sorry, uh, sodomy, but they almost never, ever, ever talk about usury. They almost never, ever, ever talk about this cult that uh, we're all serving, that which revolves around money and the star of Remfam, which is on the back of a dollar bill, right? These symbols are all on the back of the dollar bill along with the pyramid, which represents our captivity. So, you know, there's a, uh, Karen had a good quote in here, because Yahweh is the only king. That is true, that is the absolute truth. However, however, haven't you heard the, the, the phrase that cash is king? Haven't you heard that he who has the money makes the rules? Haven't you also heard that money is the root of all evil? Well, in this world, in Babylon, whoever has money can make the rules. Whoever has money can buy any piece of land because it's not sacred anymore. Whoever's got the money, well, he can get admitted into, you know, if uh, uh, parents have a, a daughter of, uh, she's not married, you know, she's like from 18 or, or you know, 16 to, to marrying age, right? The, if, if, if a guy was coming around courting the daughter, the first thing the parents want to know is how much money has he got? What kind of job you got? They don't care about the job. They care about how much money he has. Because you can buy most anything in this system of prostitution. And that's what it says in the, the book of Revelation. Come out of her, my pe uh, people, so you do not participate in her sins and receive her plagues. Because... Uh, uh, Mystery Babylon is the mother of harlots, prostitutes, and abominations. Abominations. Because it causes his people to sin. And Moses, way, way back in Numbers during the uh, wilderness 
travel <laughs> during the wilderness, he was explaining to his people about something called uh, Nashek. Nashek is Hebrew for a snake bite. It's also Hebrew for another really important word, usury. All right, did you know that the snake bite, right? Did you know that the snake bite is usury, which creates a sickness? So right close to where I was just reading from uh, uh, Proverbs 28, 9, again, I'm going to read it again because this is a very, very important. If you're going to church and you're praying, even your prayers will be an abomination. Not just that they go unheard, they're an abomination because you are serving this other God that you obey the Constitution, the, uh, the, this money system of wickedness. You're, we're all serving these gods. It's a system of prostitution. I serve it too. I'm not just blaming you guys, you know? We're all captive. Again, it says, no, I'm, I'm trying to prove to you that we are under the mark of the beast right now. That's not future. We've been under the mark of the beast. It, it's automatic. As soon as we are under man's law, we are, we are under the mark of the beast. So we refused Yahweh's law 2,000 years ago because Yahweh proclaimed Jubilee in the synagogue and they wanted to throw him off a cliff for doing so. Because under the Jubilee law, God's law, we are no longer bond servants, we're no longer debt slaves, all debts are forgiven, the land is returned to the people uh, as a free land inheritance. So this money thing is a big, big deal. And people get brainwashed because the money power has unlimited funding to brainwash you to think that this is holy. When in fact, this is a satanic replacement for this which is holy. And that's why it's so important that we understand the Feast of the Lord and that during the Feast of the Lord, the second feast is uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread and where we remove this sin from our families, we remove it from our minds. And I'm, you know, I understand we can't remove our Federal Reserve notes, but that is the ultimate idol that we have to get rid of so that we're able to, we need to issue our own money usury free so that we're not held captive under this cult of money. So, <clears throat> he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. That's how far we have been separated from our king. So let's get back there. So closely connected to that, right before that, in uh, Proverbs, I just read uh, Proverbs 28, 9. The uh, verse before that is 28, 8. And it says, he that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance, he shall gather for him that will be pity to the poor. So basically Yahweh is, is warning us that this usury thing is very, very wicked. So let's get into Moses connecting this dollar symbol, connecting the dollar symbol with usury and the word Nashek along with the idea of the snake bite. This snake bite is something that everybody in, in nature, you would understand a snake bite's a bad thing. So that through the ages, that this poison, we get bitten by it, it destroys us. So it's extremely important we understand this usury thing because it's a snake bite which has afflicted all humanity. And by the way, many people would say, Oh, Wayne, you're, you're talking about these, you know, these self-righteous people that in the church, you know, like a pastor. Oh, I don't, I don't participate in usury. Uh, we bought this church with cash and donations. Uh, we didn't take out a loan from the bank. We don't participate in usury. Nonsense, you self-deceived liar. Nonsense. Nonsense. Because when you buy a, anything, you go to a convenience store and you buy a pack of gum, Part of that purchase includes usury. If you, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just showing you things from around here, okay? I build pools. When I, this is called a ball valve, right? So when you buy this from a, a plumbing supply house, your, uh, a portion of this pays for usury because they have a, a, a loan on their building, right? So a portion of that that purchase went to pay for usury. 
And by the way, so, well, so, well, I only buy from you know places that don't participate in usury. You know, so this is what the self-deceived will say. And I say to them, well, well, part of that pays for uh, this purchase paid for sales tax. You paid for the sales tax. Well, well, yeah, we have to. Well, I say, well, sales tax is on uh, loans. So the government takes out a loan and pays a bunch of private companies. Well, when you're paying the sales tax, the sales tax includes usury because they take out a bond with interest. You know, it's low interest. It's five, six, seven. But Yahweh says any interest is usury. So we, we, when we make any per, uh, purchase, we're participating and we're lifting up these false idols, these earthly gods. No matter how much this hurts to hear, we are serving Pharaoh, all of us. That's why there's a pyramid in the back of a dollar bill. We're serving Satan. Just like Pharaoh was a representative for Satan, these uh, money lenders are representatives, and that's why our king reserved his only violent act where he physically whipped these bankers. All this stuff's connected. He's trying to say, yo, <laughs> I'm not doing this for no reason. I'm trying to show if you're my followers, do what I did. You whip these money lenders. Glorify me. Do what I did. Proclaim jubilee in the synagogues, in the churches, where the, the people are going to want to throw you off the cliff. And that when all you're doing is doing the exact same thing that Yahweh did, y Yeshua, his son, did, the anointed Yahu saves, Jesus Christ did, when he went into the synagogue speaking Hebrew, reading from the scroll of Isaiah, right? These are our tribal kings. The tribal king did this. <clears throat> our tribal creator, the creator of everything, Yahweh. These are lessons for us. So if you have a Strong's, uh, look up number 5391. Repeat. The word is Nashak, N-A-S-H-A-C-K, or A-K. Uh, Strong's number 5391. I ain't making this up, brother, sister. There is a direct correlation <clears throat> between a snake bite and usury. Snake, right? The dollar symbol of the one world currency. <laughs> It's, these guys are dollar, diabolical, man. They are diabolical. But we're going to win. And that's why it's going to be so awesome. Is because with this great victory, it's like, man, the, everybody in the world, it, like a big reason why a lot of people vote for Trump when they know the system is wicked. And like people like Michael Rivero, people like uh, Stephen Quayle, people like uh, Stefan Molyneux and uh, Alex Jones and... Um, just all of these guys rolled for Donald Trump. They rolled over like, like duped, duped idiots. And as long as you keep following these guys, these guys that don't talk about usury, these guys that don't focus on usury and focus on systems which, uh, new monetary systems which overcome usury, you are going to be duped and keep getting duped over and over and over again. That's why the Bible, our king's law, our tribal leader's law, warns us over and over and over again in so many different ways. So let's get to uh, Nashek, which again is part of the dollar symbol, which these that's a symbol of capitalism. And our king is neither promoting capitalism or communism. He's the middle way which is, uh, you know, in a way to make it very simple, think of the Amish, Amish that have a barter-based system or the American Indians. The American Indians knew that no man owned the land because Yahweh owns the land. We didn't create it. How can we own it? You know, this is the opposite of capitalism. And it's the opposite of communism because communism puts the land ownership into the hands of the state. Right? I'm, I'm describing a, a Hegelian dialect created by Esau Edomites. Uh, by the Jews, the so-called Jews, the fake Jews, the synagogue of Satan, with Karl Marx, the Edomite Jew, who uh, promoted capitalism, uh, communism as the loyal opposition solution. Economics, we're talking about economics. We focus on economics because this is the 
this 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 structure this is the uh, this is the school of the prophets and we're going to teach a different economic system and I'm giving an economic lesson as a prophet of Yahweh I'm going to teach something that you ain't never heard before because prophets deep they they uh, they go deep 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 right for anointed eyes only we go deep 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 to understand these things because Yahweh gives us direct revelation through the burning bush so that we can understand things that have been hidden. But if you are, are willing to surrender everything to Yahweh, you can understand these things too. Uh, it's, he wants all of his, his children to be prophets and have the anointing and to be kings and priests. This isn't exclusive to me. I'm not saying I'm better than nobody else because all I'm saying, I'm dumped it all out and I want to fill it all up with the king's wisdom because my wisdom is just filthy rags. So, <clears throat> Numbers 21, 4 through 9. Uh, you know, just to set the setting, um, this is, uh, you know, after, uh, this is during the Exodus. Um, I want to make sure I get the placement right. Uh, this is after the Exodus. They've been released from captivity. And they were going to go into the land, but the people still didn't have the faith. They were still, they had a, uh, they had the uh, they had grasshopper mentality. They were afraid, so they went they went wandering another 40 years. I'm fairly certain I got that right. Is the setting for numbers? Um, I hope I don't have that wrong. I didn't. I should have investigated deep. But but anyway, the the, the point is here, is that <clears throat> the 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 ancient Israelites. I'm going to connect this to the, the the modern Jews who are who. By the way, they are not Israelites. They are Edomites, right? This is a, a talking about the, the true king of the Bible is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Judah is holy. J the Judahites obeyed this. The fake Jews, they, they follow this, the synagogue of Satan, which is the star of Remphan. This is the symbol of those who actually participate in usury, who Jesus whipped, the scribes and the Pharisees, the money lenders. Uh, the last three heads of the Federal Reserve have all been uh, Edomite Jews. Um, you know, this is this this is on the back of a dollar bill, the one world currency. This is the the six 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 of Revelation, which is the mark of the beast. Uh, you know, connecting it to the synagogue of Satan. All right, and by the way, the Jews can quickly they can. Uh, we, we and by the way, I love the Jews, the authentic Jews like Nehemiah who uh, said, I pray thee, leave off this usury. So it all comes down to the, the way we distinguish who, what God we serve, is that the God Yahweh, the God of the Bible, new and old, do we obey the law or rebel from it? That is the fruit. Because it says, uh, you know, there'll be many, many that come in, in my name, um, but I will say, depart from me, uh, I've never known thee, uh, you who practice lawlessness. So whether you're a Christian or a Jew, whether you're a Christian or a Jew, he will. The king's going to deny you because you deny him because you refer, you fe, refuse to serve our tribal king's law. Whether you're a Christian or a Jew, so we Christians and Jews have to bring it together. And what's going to happen is if we observe the king's laws, we will reject usury. We will reject this system, this cult that has oppressed humanity. So the setting is, is, is they're marching in the wilderness. And all of a sudden, the Edomites, the Edomites started hassling, attacking them and killing them and taking some of them captive. Uh, because they were being, whenever... Uh, we, we were talking about this on an earlier episode. Whenever God's people, the Israelites, are being afflicted, it's because we're rebelling. Because if we obey God's laws, it's the Israelite, the IDF, the true Israelites. I'm an Israelite. You're an Israelite. Everybody that hear uh, the shepherds call are Israelites. We hear his voice because he wants to bring us back through the narrow gate. And getting away from usury is a very, very, very narrow gate. So... Numbers 21.4, and they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass to go around the land of Edom, Edomites. 
And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way, because they had to take the long way around, because the Edomites were the adversaries of the Israelites. And the people spank against, and by the way, this is Old Testament stuff, Jews. This is Old Testament stuff, right? I'm not saying you've got to believe Jesus. You need to believe your Yahweh of the Old Testament. Eventually, you're, Jesus, you're just going to find that King Yeshua, the king of the Christians, you're going to find out he obeyed the law. Uh, if you obey the law, you're going to see he's the king. It's just going to come out that way. <clears throat> So the people were much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake, spake, spake. <laughs> and the people spake against God and against Moses. So they're like, they're tired. You, ever, you know, when we build pools, I just get, there's times like, you know, Jim Callahan can attest to this. I just get really quiet because when you get tired uh, and it's hot out and it's beating you down and they're in the wilderness and you haven't eaten and, and you're, you haven't drank enough water, and you're just tired, you, the devil starts coming in and you start getting angry and resentful. And you're not, you're not a good ambassador for the kingdom because uh, you're just discouraged and you're just tired and you're like, man, like I, I get angry because I know I'm working, I'm, I'm, I'm lifting Pharaoh up. My labor is what lifts Pharaoh up and I get angry and discouraged and I get angry that people are, won't listen to these messages and it's, we're not getting enough traction and we're not getting enough people that are willing to rise up and defy Pharaoh and defy uh, uh, Caesar and be willing to serve and fear only the true king. So anyway, I get down and I start, you know, sometimes I start cursing God, like, God, why, why is this so difficult? Why is it so hard to get people to listen? Uh, because my, I, you know, I have a, a one and a half year old son and I'm terrified. I don't want him to be a captive. I don't want him to be a slave to Pharaoh. I want him to live in the kingdom. And, and uh, <laughs> it breaks my heart to think of it. And it's our responsibility as of fathers and mothers that our, children's are not, are not, our children are not bond servants to earthly gods, that they are not raised in this cult of money. So anyway, they're discouraged. And the people spank against God and against Moses. Quote, and the people said, Wherefore, have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? And there was no bread, neither was there any water. And our soul, our soul loatheth this light bread. So that's the cause. They were rebelling, they were discouraged, and they were getting angry. So I'm, I'm explaining the effect. Now here's the effect. And Yahweh sent fiery serpents among the people. Yahweh did it. Yahweh puts the curse and the hex on the people. Because we're in rebellion. Because we're cursing him. Because we're not obeying. It comes from, the curse comes from Yahweh. The mark comes from Yahweh. The captivity comes from Yahweh. Because he's sovereign. He allows the Edomite Jews to afflict the Israelites. He allows Caesar to crucify him. He allows the Jews to uh, kill him, the money lenders, and, and to, to persecute his people. He allows it because we are in rebellion. And as soon, so as painful as that is, as soon as we end our rebellion, you know how quick you can end your rebellion? obey this doctrine instead of the doctrine that you see on TV and out in the world. Stop obeying this doctrine. How quickly we could establish our own money system based upon barter. How quick can we do that? Months, 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 months. The Exodus is a story about a people who could have gone and, and gone from captivity into the promised land in less than a year. But they, it was lack of courage. And courage is fear. And when you fear something, they, they, were a fear. they were afraid of the Nephilim or the giants that were in the land. So they, they saw themselves as grasshoppers. But if we see ourselves as King David, not ourselves, I, should, I shouldn't say it that way. I, I should say that we see ourselves that we're nothing. So much so that we're nothing and we, fill our, and we fill ourselves only with Yahweh's power, 
then Yahweh is able to use us as his hands and his feet and his voice, and we are able to an overcome every single obstacle, including all of these phony governments, all these puppet governments, including the money lenders, including the, the one world currency, including the hex. So the cause and effect, people were discouraged, they cursed God, they, they, they became rebellious. So here's the effect. And Yahweh sent fiery serpents among the, the people, and they bit the people. Serpents, snakes, nashek, usury. And much of the people of Israel died. Are the people of Israel dying right now? You betcha. Therefore, people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. They admitted it. <laughs> they admitted that they were bitten by snakes. They admitted it, and, and that's a, a, a reference to usury. Because the people then, this is after Exodus. In Exodus, right? In Exodus, so what are the books that were before Numbers? You have Exodus. You have Leviticus. All right, so the books prior to Numbers, and I'm not certain of the chronological uh, aspects of when they, they put the books together. So Exodus, they absolutely warned. Chronologically, Exodus occurred prior to Numbers. So they were already familiar with Nashek. And by the way, when they were enslaved by Pharaoh, Pharaoh turned them into bond servants through usury. It's always the same thing. Whenever there's a captivity, there's always usury. It's the same thing. Wherever usury goes, there's sodomy. Wherever usury goes, there's sexual imm immorality. Uh, it's a cause and effect. All of, the, all of the sins will be promoted by the usurers to, to put the people into further and deep, more deep captivity. <clears throat> Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord, Yahweh, and against thee. So they said, you know, we spoke against Yahweh, our, our, our creator, and we also spent, spoke against our prophet, who has direct revelation with Yahweh, meaning Moses. <clears throat> and it says, pray unto Yahweh that thee take away the serpents from us. Do you want to take away the serpents from you? Yes, we do, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And Moses prayed for the people. And then Yahweh said to Moses, make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And by the way, the serpent on the pole, that also represents what? Genesis, the serpent on the tree, right? It's nothing new under the sun. And it came to pass that everyone that was bitten, when he look upon it, shall live. So basically, if you can imagine, so Moses, you know, imagine this pole right here. Uh, Moses took a pole and he put a, a brass serpent on it, or bronze serpent, whatever. And he's, he's trying to explain to the, the people, you know, this is my uh, prop. <laughs> so imagine this was a snake. And I put it on that pole, and he's saying, he's given a lesson of Nashek. Nashek, if you participate in it, if you're, whether you're a giver of usury or a taker of usury, you're going to be under the curse. Because if you're, there's under, if we're operating under the money issuance policy of the tithe, we all issue our own money and we don't have to borrow money from the money lenders. We can issue money. <clears throat> under, under the uh, money issuance policy of Deuteronomy 14.25, we turn our tithe into money by making a bond with Yahweh we make a bond with I, uh, Yahweh. We issue a bond to Yahweh, an IOU. A bond is an IOU, and we owe, uh, for instance, I owe Yahweh uh, 10 pools that I'm going to build uh, that people, that, that believers can turn into uh, baptism pools, that I do those for free. So I issue an IOU, a hand, and then I sign it, I, I bind it in my name to Yahweh. Um, bind, I bind it with my hand, 
and I issue it to Yahweh. So now if I'm issuing my own money, I don't have to go to these money lenders, right? And be snake bitten so that uh, they become more and more powerful. Over time, they are gonna get more and more powerful, more and more powerful. And what are they gonna do? They're gonna turn us all into debt slaves. They're gonna steal all the land. They're gonna create a puppet government with a bunch of prostitute uh, priests uh, in, in the churches. They're gonna create a bunch of prostitute uh, lawyers and uh, congressmen and presidents and popes and priests and pastors and uh, senators and your news media is going to be comprised where you get information is going to be comprised with a bunch of prostitutes who do it all for the money they'll tell you anything and any set of lies they'll make up something called science this phony science system and evolution and they'll create an entire false reality called Babylon that's what happened. And all the way back here 3,500 years ago, if we don't know Nashek, which is synonymous with usury and a snake bite, right? The snake bite on the pole, putting the snake on the pole, this dollar symbol thingy, which has enslaved the whole world. Bad stuff. <clears throat> and Moses made a serpent of brass, and he put it on a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, the people remember to go, oh, they connected the dots between the snake bite and why they're being uh, afflicted by these snakes, why these snakes are, are, are poisoning them. Right there. If you understand this simple lesson between the relationship between usury and our dependence upon the system of prostitution, going all the way to the, new, the last book of the Bible, our wise king's law so that you have wisdom and understanding and understand how we've been enslaved. It also gives us the solution. And the solution is the law of the Jubilees, the cycles of seven, seven by seven by seven is the 50 year Jubilee where all of the land which has been stolen by the snakes and then they have their puppet governments uh, be their uh, muscle. They're the hired muscle, the, the people in the government under the constitution, man's law. Whenever under man's law, we're gonna be enslaved and we're gonna be snake bitten and we're gonna be held captive and we get out of it by listening and obeying our king instead of man's law. Cause and effect. Cause and, so the cause and effect which harms us is the same. The cause and the effect to go into release is the same. We stop, just like our ancient Israelite fathers, we stop serving the earthly gods. So there's a couple more mentions in scripture with respect to uh, the, 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 the snake in the wilderness on the, uh, the brass pole. I wanna make sure I'm reading that. Yeah, the serpent of brass. All right, so in the New Testament, Jesus is talking about, uh, it's in John 3, 3 through 14. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. And, you know, imagine right now, if you're a pastor or a learned uh, person, you, you have the Bible memorized. Well, Nicodemus was one of these such men. He understood all of the details of the law, like he understood the word perfectly. But, but Jesus wanted to explain to him direct revelation through the Holy Spirit to contrast that so that you can understand the Holy Spirit. There's, there's, you know, there's billions of people who have read this book. Meanwhile, they still serve the earthly gods. I do too. Like I'm, I, I, I admit that I still serve these earthly gods. The difference is... I am actively trying to overcome that. I can't exodus by myself. All I can do is be a teacher and a revelator uh, during the captivity and I can start participating in the usury free money system because we're supposed to be faithful doers of the law, which I will do. Um, but I can't create a money system all by myself. So I have to create these messages so that people understand why it's an absolute mission 
essential thing that we create our own usury free money system. It's absolutely positively essential to whip the money lenders, we have to create our own money system. <clears throat> so uh, Jesus in John 3.3, 3, um, talking to uh, Nicodemus and, and speaking about the revelation of being born again. Born again doesn't mean just like, okay, now I'm Christian and I believe Jesus. That's not enough. Born again is, you're like, uh, uh, a good example is from the movie Matrix, the Matrix movie, where this, where's the, this guy, um, I think it's John Anderson. I think his name's John Anderson. I'm not, it, the last name is definitely Anderson. He held up his, uh, he held up his uh, driver's license <laughs> and it actually, actually uh, 9 11 2001 on it was the date of his driver's license and uh, basically showing how these Edomite Jews who control Hollywood they rub it in our faces uh, about how we're in captivity and we're under the mark and basically they're calling us out as being punks and I, I'm, I'm ready to help uh, create this revolution to glorify our king where we overcome it so that we're they're not no longer able to just rub it in our faces and put a pyramid on the back of a one world currency there's a hawk going by right that hawk that hawk you hear that hawk that hawk is a predator and we have to admit that we have been prey that we have been being preyed upon by this wicked system and we have to stop being so you know, we have to be wise as serpents, but don't be serpents. And be innocent as doves. And the way you're innocent is that you're not being, uh, participating in helping these devils enslave our people. Um, so anyway, the transition, that's what it means to cross over. So this, I think it's John Anderson, he went on to be Neo. So he was in a system and he was just, you know, just like all of us, we're all just working for the system slaving away for Pharaoh and these earthly gods, like dummies. And he was working in a cubicle, and he was basically communicated with, uh, and he went on not only to acknowledge that, uh, the truth, that he was a captive, that he was being turned into a human battery. Sorry, there's a, a lawnmower going by. Not only was he, um, did he see the truth that he was a slave and, and admit it? He admitted he was a slave. He also became a valiant, willing to physically die to fight that system. That's being born again, which most Christians have never ever made that decision like our ancient Israelite fathers, that they are going to defy Pharaoh. That's a whole different thing. It's one thing to say, you know, like our ancient Israelite uh, brothers and sisters in the beginning of the Exodus story, they were captives under Pharaoh, right? So they're, they're, you know, they're making bricks for Pharaoh. So they said that, you know, we believe Yahweh, but we're working for Pharaoh. We're obeying Pharaoh. We're, uh, we're serving Pharaoh. We're bond servants for Pharaoh, but we believe Yahweh. <laughs> they, yo, if you went up to them, you go, hey, well, who's your God? Is it Pharaoh? Is Pharaoh the God? Like, no, 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 I'm holy. I, oh, I believe in Yahweh. Well, God says to you, like, well, if you believe in Yahweh, how come you're serving Pharaoh? <laughs> Do you understand this transition? You have to defy. You have to gain the, 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 the intestinal fortitude the stones, the balls, the balls to reject your domestication, how we get domesticated in the captivity. Myself included, I've been domesticated, but think, think if we were like a, a, an American wild, wild like that hawk, right? If I took, if I like could reach and grab that, that hawk would fight me and he'd bite my arm and he'd have like these talons that would gouge my hand because he hasn't been domesticated. He still's got his stones. Think of fire ants in Florida or wasps. They defend their turf. Turf. You can't go to them and give them some, 
some money and take their land and, 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 and hire their daughters as prostitutes, you, you know, you, you can't, uh, you won't just go work for them. They would never, like, the, that hawk won't work for me. <laughs> I can't steal his nest without him attacking me. Well, that's what it means to be born again. Born again is obedient to Yahweh, fiercely willing to die because you listen to Yahweh and you fear only him. And you're willing to defy earthly gods, defy Pharaoh, to defy the hawk is standing there looking at me. He's going, yeah, that's right, baby. Don't mess with me. <laughs> ka, ka, ka. My son walks around here and he gets to see all this wildlife and it's magnificent because I want him to learn from nature <clears throat> and see the ways of nature so that he can see what Yahweh, the, the kingdom which Yahweh has created, where, where, they are not, where they're not domesticated. You hear that? He's proud. He's going, ka, ka. So, <clears throat> so John 3.3, 3, that's what it means to be born again in the spirit. How do you get that? A big part of that is your burning bush, bush revelation. The burn, every, all of us have to have a burning bush revelation where the king speaks to us directly. This is a representation of that through the cycles of sevens. <clears throat> so John 3.3. 3, uh, Jesus answered him, Nicodemus, and said, verily, 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 I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see this, the kingdom of God. That's big. If you can't see it, you can't get there. <clears throat> and then Nic Nicodemus replied, and by the way, this is going to be related to the, uh, the, the brass serpent. Ni Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he isn't old? So how can you be reborn when you're an adult? Like my age, I'm 52. How can I be born? I'm, I'm 52 years old. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except, to be, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. He's talking about the baptism by fire and the baptism versus the baptism of water. So this is very important, brother, sister. Many of you have been baptized in water. And it says in, uh, you know, I'm going by memory. This isn't going to be exact, but close. In uh, Matthew 3.11, John the Baptist is talking about two different baptisms. He's talking about one baptism with water and another a baptism by fire where you receive the spirit of Yahweh. So it's, it goes roughly, uh, John the Baptist says, um, <clears throat> talking about Jesus, and he says, uh, I will baptize you with water for repentance. You know, if you can imagine this is a cup that's full right now. I'm full with me and my sin. You can see the hawk fly by, that's awesome. So. Um, Verily, verily, I will baptize you with water for repentance. So then you clean out the cup. But he who follows me, whose souls I'm not fit to tie. <clears throat> so you clean out the cup. He will baptize you with fire. The baptism with fire. And if you read in the book of Acts, repeatedly there are those who had been already baptized with John the, by, by, by John the Baptist that they received a second baptism with water, sorry, with fire, the anointing. It's a second baptism. And by the way, baptism means immersion. And when you baptize with holy anointing oil, which includes cannabis, by the way, as much as you hate it, it includes cannabis. And uh, there's two uh, uh, versions of this immersion. One is in smoke in the, the uh, the hot box in Exodus 37, and it's the uh, holy anointing oil in Exodus 30, 23. Um, very, very important because now you change teams and you stop being a coward. And that's what happened at Pentecost in the book of Acts, where they stopped being cowards, where they did, uh, you know, even Peter, an apostle, denied Jesus three times, but at Pentecost, they received the Holy 
Spirit in the baptism by fire where they were filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit doesn't submit to no man like the hawk. He ain't afraid of the government. He ain't afraid of the Constitution. He doesn't have an oath to the Constitution <laughs> like the American Indians, like the Amish that beat in their chest going, can you imagine the, the American Indians going, oh, we, we signed the Constitution, I take my oath to the Constitution, the very Constitution that enslaved them. The Constitution enslaves you with the law of man. The law of Yahweh releases you through the Jubilee. Do you understand that the Constitution is the idol? It's the work of man's hands that is being used to enslave you. The flag, the anthem, the oath, the special song. You know, you ever notice on TV that they always use uh, Colin Ka Kaepernick, the football player, and they uh, as a representative of why you shouldn't say the Pledge of Allegiance or, or, and, and stand for the national anthem? I'm saying to you as a representative, thus saith the Lord, you do not stand for the national anthem because the king of the universe, your tribal king, says you don't obey man's laws. You tear down their idols. You, you are an obedient servant of the king. Babylon always wants to create a Hegelian dialect between capitalism and communism. So he wants, that Babylon wants to make it seem as if those people who are refusing to stand for the national anthem, they're all communists. Well, I ain't a communist. I'm not an Edomite. I'm not an atheist. And I'm not a capitalist. I'm ne neither to, you know, the, the, the Bible says, you know, don't go one way with it or don't go the other way with it. Don't add, don't take away. Be the middle way. The middle way is the narrow path. Don't get deceived into being a capitalist and Austrian economics and all those uh, Jews, uh, Edomite, fake Jews of the synagogue of Satan like Murray, Rothbard, or Mises, or uh, all them guys. You know who I'm talking about. The uh, 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 Alan Greenspan, uh, uh, Ben Bernanke, right? You know, it's not a mistake that the last three heads of the Federal Reserve are representatives of the mark of the beast. Uh, I got the wrong uh, sheet up. There it is. Are representatives of the mark of the beast. Painful truths, but you can change over like Nehemiah, an awesome representative of the house of Judah, who says, I pray thee, leave off this usury in Nehemiah 5, where he led a debtor's rebellion. So we want Jews and Christians to unite and stop being deceived that we need to be fighting one another and unite in truth under our king's law. <clears throat> okay, getting back to uh, John 3. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, the spirit comes through the holy anointing. Um, he cannot enter into the kingdom because that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of spirit is spirit. spirit. Marvel, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Don't be so amazed because this is, this is normal. You, you should understand that there's things that are uh, carnal and there's things that are spiritual. Speaking to Nicodemus, there's... So, and what he's referring to is if you go just deep, deep, deep into only understanding God through his word, you're only going to come to one level of understanding. But if you have received direct revelation from your king, you won't be deceived any longer uh, by the lying priests, the lying popes, the lying, all of these guys that are there to be uh, breaking the chain of command, right? You want to have a direct chain of command with your creator, direct chain of uh, ch command with your creator that you obey him and not man's laws so that you don't have the government in there being in, uh, breaking the chain of command. The, you know, the, the man's government, 
so that you don't have uh, the uh, phony church in there breaking the chain of command, so that you don't have Ellen in there, you know, the daytime. You don't have the, uh, the princesses of, uh, you know, the whores of Babylon, that you don't have uh, sex in the city, you don't have the culture of the world, that you don't have football and pornography and pro sports and basketball, uh, all of this idolatry, all of those things are there to be, uh, to, to break the chain of command so that you, uh, you, that you conform to the world. We are supposed to be separate and defy this system of Babylon. <clears throat> so that's what um, Jesus is trying to explain, that once you're born back into the spirit, you will hate the world. You will, you will want to have no part of it. You want to be separate. Exodus, that's what motivates you for, to have an exodus. That we leave our captivity in mass. Not just one, me and a couple other guys that have this level of understanding. We can't do it by ourselves. We need 144,000 fathers of children to lead it for their children and be the heads and stand up. Hoorah! Get with the program. <clears throat> Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Because now he's going to explain how the wind is a good represent. That's kind of blowing here now. I'm hoping that it's not giving you a bad sound quality. The wind bloweth where it listeth, mean it where it wants to. And thou heareth the, the sound thereof. You can hear it, but you can't tell, you cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goes. You, you can't tell what the source of the wind is, and you can't tell where its destination is. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Then Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Aren't you a master of Israel? Don't you know these things? He says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that know these things, and testify that we have seen. I'm, I, I want to be... I'm auditioning for a job to be one of the two witnesses, so I'm giving testimony. And we testify that we have seen these things. And ye have received not our witnesses. I'm trying to witness you that I have seen your... Yahweh does not want us to be serving the Constitution. <laughs> Think of the American Indians. He wants you to hate the Constitution as much as the American Indians did. 50, you know, 150 years ago. Not, not that you even hate it, you just ignore it. You don't even think anything of it. <laughs> you know that it's an idol. You know that voting is a restriction on Yahweh who can accomplish his will because he doesn't need a majority. That these, this money system, I wrong sheet, you know, this, this phony money system is, is something that it, it's exalting itself above Yahweh, like the Constitution. It's a false idol. <clears throat> I have told you earthly things. Sorry, if I have told you earthly things and you have not believed, how will I believe you if, how will you believe me if I tell you of heavenly things? See? Yahweh wants them to get into the spirit so you can see the heavenly things, the things that you, you know, it's, if you don't understand the earthly things, how can you understand the heavenly things? The things that come of the spirit. And by the way, Jesus is going to explain that nobody's in heaven here other than him. Nobody goes to heaven, by the way. You just go to sleep. You don't go to heaven or hell. Yahweh's going to say it right here. Uh, this is uh, 13. Uh, and no man and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. <clears throat> Finally, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness to, to, to show to his people, what's the remedy to this serpent bite? What's the remedy to it? Well, Moses had this symbolism. So if you, you know, if you got this 
snake on a pole, this dollar hat, what's the solution to it? The solution to it is Yahweh and his son Yeshua, the anointed Christ, Jesus Christ. That's the solution. He is the gate. He is the way, the truth, the life. If we follow and do the things that he did, including whipping the money lenders, including, including proclaiming Jubilee, including not going to the heathen, Jesus went to the, the power structures, those who had power, and embarrassed them with his law, with the king's law. Because he was contrasting who they were obedient to and who they obeyed, uh, obeyed and what their law system was versus, so their system was based upon the tradition of man, Talmudism, versus our king's law is based upon the commandments of Yahweh found in our tribal book, our tribal king's book. So it's, it's a matter of tearing down these I idols. Now sadly, sadly, this, this pole with a snake on it became an idol because it's an idol now right? The pole with the snake. It's an idol now with the dollar bill. It's an idol now. And the Bible even gives an example of when it became an idol under uh, King Hezekiah. And Hezekiah was, here's, here's another uh, example of a Judahite, a Jew, a true Jew, a Judahite who was honest and noble. So we want to invite, and this is from the Old Testament, we want to invite uh, Jews who are willing to obey the law of the Bible to unite with us to go on in Exodus. We are not the house of Israel and the house of Judah are two separate groups. We need to unite in truth under our king's law, in obedience to our king's law, and our king says, usury is a sin. And Nehemiah said, I pray thee, leave off this usury. So King Hezekiah, as it's recorded, as it's witnessed in 2 Kings 18.4, he was explaining how, uh, th this is re a witness of how uh, the, the pole which Moses made became an idol. And he had to tear it down so, because people were no longer using it for its intended purpose, but rather they were burning uh, strange incense to it because they're sacrificing and obeying a, a, a false god, a god, a god that wasn't represented by the morality of our king. <clears throat> okay, uh, 2 Kings 18, 4. Uh, witnessing King Hezekiah. He did right in the sight of Yahweh according to all that his father David had done. So he's explaining that he's doing the same stuff as David, which is a good thing. You know, not that David was perfect. He, David's a human being, so he's going to be imperfect and he's going to do, you know, he's going to sin. But generally speaking, he did way better than most. Just like us. We're, we're going to slip and thankfully we have grace uh, under our father, uh, Jesus, King Jesus, uh, who... who picks us up and he, he knows that we're going to slip and fall, just like I do with my son. I know my son's going to fail. I don't want to condemn him, I, I wanna, but I also want him to be obedient as I'm the covering for my family. I want him to be obedient to the morality of our king. And the morality of our king, again, says Nashek is an abomination. <clears throat> He removed the high places and broke down the sacred pillars and cut down the Ashtaroth. He also broke into pieces the bronze serpent. I'm going to wait till this lawnmower passes so that uh, the sound isn't too bad. In fact, this is a good time I could read a comment. Or a... Religious characters are metaphors for the workings of the human body. The burning bush is the kundalini fire energy igniting our pi pineal gland consciousness and hence freedom through cosmic reconnection. This is also the symbolic Mozilla Firefox computer. Sodom and Gomorrah are the two lower chakras burnt as the kundalini energy fire travels in the highest chakra. Um,
you know, uh, this this hint this is a Hindu teaching. Well, this this is something I say to to people who are Hindu. Um, my king whipped the money lenders. My king says obedient uh, usury is a sin. My king gives all the land back to the people for free. My king forgives debt every seven years. It's very, very specific. Very, very specific. He tells you when at the Feast of Tents, which is a representation of the Feast of Seven, right? I ain't hear no Hindu guy talking about these things. I don't hear no Hindu guys talking about the dollar bill. Our king warned against all of this stuff, the dollar bill, the star of Remphan, the hex, which is all on, it's on the one world currency. Our king whipped these guys. It's very, very specific. So if you, if you have a, imagine you have an owner's manual, like we do, it's called the, the Bible. Do you want an owner's manual that's real vague? And if you follow these things, you know, if you sit right with yoga and you work on your chakras and you do all this kind of stuff, you can create a, a sense of well-being for yourself, right? Kind of like Buddhism does. You create the kingdom of God in your mind. And this is what the phony church does today, is that it just, you have, you, you're only a threat. You're, in fact, you're really not a threat. All you're doing is reforming yourself. You're only working on yourself. What we're talking about is rebelling and defying these earthly gods and setting up a new system under a new form of government where it delineates this government where that there's captains of kens, captains of fifties, captains of a hundred, captains of thousands who make sure and they're judges of the people who say, hey, you know, you know my, if I'm the leader of the ten, if I'm the captain of the ten, there ain't going to be no usury in my crew, in my, with my group. And by the way, I'd, like, I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to have direct revelation, and that's a good thing. I, I agree with that with the chakra thing. Um, that's cool. Have direct revelation. However, if you have direct revelation, you say, and you come up and you're still participating in usury, I'm going to say, you are burning strange incense to some other god because our king, our tribal king, usury ain't gonna happen. Debts over seven years ain't gonna happen. You're using these Federal Reserve notes still when we ha when you can have when you can buy all of the things that you require with our own um, with our own self we, we've we've come to a point through the school of the prophets and through our efforts through the Exodus that we're able to issue our own money uh, so that we don't have to uh, lift up the system of devils we're not going to have it because we realize once we allow these snakes back in that slowly they're going to create a false teaching that they're going to get us to worship these other gods that don't talk about usury that don't talk about debt forgiveness that don't talk about our free land inheritance so that's why i'm a christian because my king whipped the money lenders my king is the way is the truth, is the life. My king went into the, when he was trying to be, when they were trying to kill him when he was born, that he was a, he was the most wanted man in all of the kingdom, the fake kingdom, that he went in to the temple when he was 12 years old and he was sparred with the phony scribes and the Pharisees of his day because he's got stones. He ain't Buddha eating a sandwich. He's whipping the money lenders. And my king said that there was gonna be a hexagram on the one world currency and that you couldn't live without, you know, you couldn't buy and sell without it. That's my king. So, he, uh, we're talking about Hezekiah. He also broke down the pieces. 
he also broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made because until those days the sons of Israel burned incense to it and it was called Nahushtan. So basically he's explaining how eventually the, the bronze uh, serpent it became a, a false idol. All right, 2 Kings 18.5, Hezekiah, he trusted Yahweh, the God of Israel, so that after him there was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor those who were before him. The, so these stories are witnesses of, of a people repeatedly who went into captivity and releases, seasons of captivity and seasons of release. We're in a season right now of captivity, with the mark of the beast, with the curse of the money lenders, specific things, the curse of the money lenders, uh, the curses describe the captivity, uh, Babylon is mentioned in the book of Revelation, and it's a world economic system which has enslaved humanity. A real thing, not a conspiracy theory, it's a conspiracy fact that these, uh, you know, just as it was describing in Numbers, these Edomites who were in control of this snake bite, Nashak, the snake bite, which has ensnared humanity with this poison, which is destroying all of us and turning us mad. You know, this, here's a good way to understand this madness. Right now, there, there is multiple, many times over, this debt. In order to pay this debt off, right, you, you would need to have like five planets. Five, five uh, I shouldn't say planets. There, 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 you'd have to have five Earths in order to mortgage them for all of their assets in order to pay off this loan because the, the, the usury keeps growing this debt bigger and bigger and bigger. Usury keeps getting bigger and bigger. So imagine this is the value of the earth. You know, the value of the earth is many times over, but in order to pay off this debt, you'd have to have uh, five of them. You'd have to have a whole bunch of these in order to pay off this debt because the usury makes it grow and grow and grow and grow. It's unnatural. That's why, you know, in God's kingdom, you don't have a tree that grows 10,000 feet tall. It doesn't happen. But under usury, the debt grows, 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 grows. And the solution to that under the king's law is to forgive all debts every seven years. And is to forbid usury. These are specific laws so that we don't become enslaved. Where we have a debt now which is like 20 trillion dollars is the national debt and that's not even talking about the consumer debt so that everything that we buy everything we purchase uh, from a can of spray paint to uh you know some teflon tape to uh some even these candles these menorah candles are purchased so it corrupts the the usury infects everything like a snake bite but our king yahweh has uh, and his son, his, uh, the anointed son, Yahshua, Yahoo saves. They've given us lessons so that we become a threat to this system through the spirit of Yahweh, which isn't afraid of any earthly powers, only afraid of Yahweh. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. That is our duty. Because if we keep his commandments... We go from a, a season of captivity right now to a season of release and that can happen in an instant because it's our rebellion which empowers, Yahweh empowers these Edomite synagogue of Satan Jews to rule humanity through the money lending system. It's not a conspiracy theory, it's a conspiracy fact. There's a conspiracy among the, the priests to profane my holy things. Right? These aren't holy things. One, you know, this was a holy thing. The the, the serpent 
uh, around a pole meant to warn his people and be, the, the devil made a counterfeit of it. Uh, this is the counterfeit of the holy thing, of the Israelites. So Yahweh, may you please bring this message to your people so that they could remember your ways and, and, and hear your voice and once again be your sheep and no longer listen to these corrupt priests and pastors in the phony churches that represent the imposter and the false bride uh, living under the traditions of man. Yahweh, please grant us your wisdom and your courage and your understanding so that we can do your will and to be your, your hands and your feet and your voice. The only weapon available to God's people is the word of Yahweh so that we can be a weapon to overcome these corrupt governments, this wicked system that uh, kills millions of innocents, uh, innocent Muslims, innocent Jews, innocent Christians. And the thing is, we're not really innocent if we're rebellion. We're not really innocent, none of us. We're all participating in serving these earthly gods. Um, so we have to come correct Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, thank you for listening, and thank you, Yahweh, for your blessings to me, uh, to allow me time, uh, Shabbat Shalom, and to uh, address your people, and to be your messenger, and hopefully be your witness uh, to glorify you. Thanks for listening.